So CDRs are a very new trading product now available to us as Canadian investors. And as of very recently, these products will allow you to go out and buy fractional shares, we're gonna call it. Uh, it's not truly fractional shares, but we're gonna look at that in a second. They also allow you to go out and buy foreign investments all listed and denominated in Canadian dollars. Over the past couple of weeks, I've got so many questions from you guys asking me to do a video. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about what a CDR is, how they work, and most importantly, how you can incorporate them into your own personal portfolios. What's up you guys and welcome back to another video. If you are new to the channel here, my name is Brandon. As always, we do offer courses and training in the stock market for Canadians. If you do wanna check out our investing academy as that first link down in the description below. But this whole concept of ADRs is actually a new one to me. The same way that you guys are hearing about it, I only came across these uh, maybe three or so weeks back when a student of ours actually shared this exact link uh, saying that CIBC was here to issue some um, new products. And since then, they've been getting a ton of traction. Before we dive into the deeper details of a CDR, let's start this video off with the very, very basics and make sure we're all on the same page here. If you are an investor in Canada that wants to go out and buy a Canadian stock, say a stock like TELUS or say a stock like Fortis or Bell or TD Bank, that should be pretty straightforward to do with no real complications other than maybe some commissions here and there because these stocks, as we know, are traded on the Canadian exchanges, in this case, the Toronto Stock Exchange. More importantly, they are traded in Canadian dollars. Now, if we wanted to go out and buy a stock as a Canadian, such as Tesla, well, as most of the viewers watching this would know, this is of course a US stock, which trades on the US exchange, in this case, the NASDAQ exchange. And more importantly, this stock is traded in US dollars, meaning that if you wanted to go out and buy this stock, you would essentially have to pay a conversion fee. You'd have to change your Canadian dollars to US dollars to then go out and purchase that stock in uh, on the NASDAQ. Let's take it a step further and say you want to go out and buy a company like Nestle. The ticker that you're looking at on the screen in this case is NESN, and this stock trades out of Switzerland in Swiss francs, or in this case, CHF. Regardless, when you go look for investments abroad outside of our own Canadian market, you do leave yourself subject to, first and foremost, conversion fees. Your brokerage will often charge you a conversion fee to get the, the proper dollars to buy these stocks. On top of that, you do leave yourself subject to something called currency risk and fluctuations in both the Canadian dollar as well as those other dollars that you're going out and buying these stocks in that can actually impact your returns. This is where we come to a very, very cool product known as the CDR or a Canadian Depository or Depository Receipt. This is a product that gives you access to companies all over the globe that are traded in Canadian dollars and on a Canadian exchange. So to read on a little bit further here, CDRs or Canadian Depository Receipts represent shares of global companies but are traded in Canadian dollars and a Canadian exchange. I just said that. Making it easy for you to get exposure to the world's biggest companies. CDRs are a lot like traditional stocks. They trade on an exchange, they flow through dividends and have voting rights. What makes CDRs different is the built-in notional currency hedge that effectively eliminates the impact of foreign exchange fluctuations between the currency of the global security versus the Canadian dollar. That means that your returns depend on the performance of the underlying shares, effectively eliminating currency fluctuations. New to Canada, CDRs are a Canadian's take on the American Depository Receipts, or ADRs, which were first introduced back in 1927. Today, the global depository receipts market is now close to $1 trillion in assets. So as it mentions there, ADRs, which you may have come across or may be familiar with, those have been around for quite some time. And on the channel here, we've talked in the past about a number of ADRs. I personally own a couple of ADRs in my personal portfolio going over to the US market to buy those. While a CDR is quite simply the Canadians take on that. And now that this is an option available, I'm gonna to have to do a reassessment of my portfolio and see if any of these make sense. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that later in the video, but let's take a moment and talk about um, an example. In this case, we're looking at Apple stock to talk about really the first major benefit that we see here in using CDRs. This kind of chart or this fork chart shows you, if you invested in Apple and the stock returned, in this case, 40%, taking a look to the top of this fork, if you went out and bought this stock directly on a US exchange, as we have done in the past, depending on the relationship between the Canadian dollar and the US dollar, your returns will be impacted. 
And in this case, let's assume the US dollar drops 10%. Although Apple's performance did not change, it still went up 40% your actual return when you factor things back into Canadian dollars actually declines. And in this case, we're looking at a return of about 26%. You actually lost on your investment. Now, of course, the reverse is also true. If the Canadian dollar strengthens 10%, you actually see a boost to your returns. In this case, the number is looking like 54%. And both myself and my father, Mark, on the channel, we've done videos on this. He did one actually quite recently uh, talking about how to hedge your portfolio as a Canadian and how to understand this relationship if you do want to go check this out. Nevertheless, changes in the Canadian dollar or the US dollar or that relationship will impact your investments. Now, if you look to the bottom of this fork, however, if you were to purchase Apple, the CDR, the Canadian Depository Receipt, well, in this case, this is a currency hedged investment, meaning that regardless of what happens with the dollar, your returns are still based on the underlying assets. This is a very clear advantage and benefit, especially to the beginner investors out there who may not have the knowledge level or may not have the care to go out and play the currency game. You can go out and buy a currency hedged asset and really just rely on the performance of the underlying stock. An additional benefit that I see almost being more popular, um, at least from the comments, this seems to be what has drawn most people in, is that CDRs are actually giving you access to a lot of companies that you otherwise would not have had. And a great example of this is if I pull up my Wealth Simple Trade app, many investors know from what we covered on the channel or just from your experience on the platform, Disney was a clear stock that was previously not available on Wealth Simple Trade. Well, through the use of an ADR, you can now access this security, a Canadian hedged version, which you can see here is traded on the Neo Exchange. We're gonna talk about it in just a second. This Disney stock is of course just one example, but a very clear one to me in how you are now getting access to more securities, more securities outside of Canada. We're gonna talk about which securities are actually available for CDRs in just a second too. Also very quickly, if you are looking to get signed up with Wall Simple, there is a sign-up promotion going on right now where you can get $50 cash bonus when you do deposit $100 or more, or you can get two free stocks by using the links down in the description below. Now, on top of getting access to more securities, benefit number three that is very clear to me is that if you actually take the time to look at it, and if you actually look down on this exact page, you'll notice that you can be getting shares of these bigger companies with a higher price ticket at a much lower price. And in this case, the CDR of Disney trades for $20.77, a much lower price than the actual Disney shares. And of course we are looking at Canadian dollars. So for investors in particular with smaller amounts of money, maybe beginners that are just getting started, this is a very, very attractive feature. And a lot of people would go as far as looking at it like fractional shares. It's not truly a fractional share. You can't go out and just buy $1 or $5 or whatever you want. They're just smaller share sizes, but especially when you look at a company like Amazon, which trades for $3,000 plus, to be able to go out and buy those for 20 bucks, I mean, to me, that's nothing to really complain about. We can call that for the sake of this video, fractional shares. Now let's take a moment and talk about the Neo Exchange, because if you did catch that, as I mentioned, the Disney CDRs do not trade on the TSX, they trade on the Neo. And here in Canada, we really do have two major uh, exchanges. The TSX, the Toronto Stock Exchange, and then we do have the NEO. Now there are a bunch of other exchanges and especially when you start getting into like smaller cap companies, you're gonna come across you know, the TSX Venture and whatnot. These will often have stocks that are maybe not qualified or they don't meet the requirements or characteristics to be traded on a major exchange. That said, as stated here, the NEO Exchange is the other established major exchange and is the other senior recognized exchange in Canada. For full transparency, I've actually never bought a stock on the NEO exchange. I've always looked to companies on the TSX, not that it really matters, because when it comes to actually buying and selling these stocks, you're not gonna notice much of a difference. One thing that you may come across is the fact that there are less shares traded on the NEO exchange. We're gonna talk about that when we get to like the considerations part of this video, but in general, it's just one of the other exchanges, and this is where the CDRs are listed. Actually, if you go to their website, which I can link down below, this is an updated list as of November 1st, and you can actually see that they have 10 US companies that are currently available to trade in this CDR form. I know it's not exactly a huge list of companies right now, but it is at least very, very exciting companies. And if you have been following along, just to finish our topic here, our talk on CDRs and really understanding what they are, CIBC was the financial institution that actually brought this product to the market back in July of 2021. 
they started with five stocks available to trade. Again, as of now, there are 10. And essentially to understand really what's going on behind the scenes, what's happening here is CIBC or whoever's putting these products out to the market, they essentially go out and buy a basket or a bundle of these stocks. They can go about and buy a bunch of Amazon stock or a bunch of Apple stock or Tesla stock. And I kind of like to think of it in a sense like an index fund is not an index fund, but kind of like that are basically a bundle of all of the same stocks. And they can essentially choose to break that down into different shares. And they essentially issue out these receipts or these certificates that represents a portion of that. And of course, let's assume we're looking at Amazon in this given example. If Amazon shares go up 10%, depending on how many shares, if you own a smaller fraction, your piece of that pie is still gonna go up. You just own a much smaller piece of the puzzle. Important to recap here though, and it says right on their website, this is crucial, that you still receive dividends, just in proportion to of course the shares or the certificates that you own or the receipts. As well, you do retain voting rights. Not sure if anybody really cares for that, but um, you still do, right? A question that you may be asking at this point, and I asked myself the very same question, so you're on top of it if you are thinking this in your head. How do these companies make money? What do they have to gain by offering these CDRs? And you had to dig a little bit deep because it does say on their website there are no management fees. It's not an index ETF uh, where they charge an MER, but what they do, as it says here on the CIBC website, is they do bake in a currency hedging fee of up to 0.6% per year. While CIBC charges no management fees for CDRs, the bank earns modest fees managing the foreign exchange hedging program, which Shearer said is capped at 0.6% per annum. So you're not gonna see this, of course, you don't have to pay this, you're not gonna um, be billed this fee, very much like when you invest in an ETF, it's actually baked into the price. And essentially, that, that's a cost that's kind of embedded within. So you're not really gonna notice it and you can make that decision whether the 0.6% baked in is, is uh, enough to deter you. It shouldn't be. In fact, I'd go as far as saying for, especially a beginner, being able to go out and get a hedged product like that, um, fractional shares, access to so much more securities, you shouldn't even be considering that, but at least you know. Let's move on now to the considerations. And I'm not gonna call these negatives per se, but they are things to consider when buying these CDRs because it's not all rainbows and uh, lollipops. But the first thing that I think is very clear to mention is that you do see lower liquidity when you invest in these products. What I mean by that is that if you actually took a look at, for example, Disney stock, in this case, we're looking at Disney CDR. So the one you'd be buying here in the Canadian market, we see the trading volume at $8,294. When we compare that to the actual shares of Disney, well, we see trading volume up at 4.7 million. So the way you really have to view these stocks, I know they're both Disney shares, but they're two independent things in and of themselves. If you're buying the CDR, there is a much lower amount of trading volume. What that means in very simple terms is that you can expect to see more volatility. More importantly, what happens is the spreads, you want more trading volume. When there's millions and millions of shares traded, those spreads are very, very thin. The lower and lower the trading volume gets, you can see that kind of uh, widen a little bit, essentially meaning you may not be getting the most efficient prices. Again, I don't think it's something to worry about, but it is just something to consider. Consideration number two is that as of right now, there are only 10 companies that trade under the CDR format. That's not, again, a huge list. They are focused, if I were to bring up that list again, to US companies. You don't have any truly international ones at this point. That said, they do expect more to come with time. Number three, dividend payments. Again, not a negative, but just something to consider. I'm really just throwing this in at this point. It does state on their website here that although dividends are passed through to CDR holders, they're received as Canadian dollars and are based on current foreign exchange rates. So for example, if you went out and bought Florida shares directly, like you went out on the TSX and bought Florida shares, you can calculate to the dollar amount, if you're this particular and you're this fine tuned of a person that wants to know exactly your quarterly income, or your quarterly payments, you can get to the dollar amount, exactly how much you're gonna get. You can get that all on their website. Of course, with these CDRs, they're collecting all these dividends in a different currency and then passing them through based on how many shares you own or how many um, CDRs you own, I should say. 
and it may not be a, an exact amount, but again, not really a bad thing whatsoever. I think I can summarize this video by just saying this is a very, very exciting feature that we have here in the Canadian market. We're starting to see things coming our way, you know, commission-free brokerages, fractional trading, CDRs. It's very, very promising to see. And where I see this being the most attractive to people is especially for those newer investors, maybe for investors with smaller dollar figures who were not able to go out and buy, you know, let's say an Amazon stock or a Google stock or an Apple stock for that matter. If you are just dipping your toes, this is a very clear option. Again, being able to avoid those currency conversions, which typically range anywhere between 1.5 to 2%, really depending on your broker, a huge, huge, huge benefit. And lastly, being able to go out and get access to a currency hedged product especially when we start, you know, with time, we may start seeing international stocks, you know, stocks from Europe, stocks from Asia being traded in this format. Those are all huge, huge benefits. And from my research, again, this is a very, very new product here in Canada, but through knowing uh, ADRs, which again, have been around for a long time, it is a very, very safe product to use. And in fact, I'd encourage people to go out and research these more because they make a lot of sense for a lot of investors. One final point that I will talk about, maybe to say, who is a CDR not for, right? Like, you know, what's the down, not the downside, but who would maybe not consider a CDR? And I think if you are more of a sophisticated investor, so let's assume you are an investor who wants to play, as I mentioned, the currency game. Maybe you understand that, hey, let's say, for example, the Canadian dollar is pretty strong right now, and I expect it to kind of weaken over the next six months, and you've done your due diligence and you feel that. Well, that may be a smart time to go out and actually buy the actual U.S. investments and hopefully those changes in the currency, um, in the relationship there, can actually benefit you. Another clear point to me where someone wouldn't use CDRs is if you, for example, have a U.S. dollar account, right? Myself, I have an account with TD Direct Investing and it's all my U.S. stocks. It's my U.S. traded stocks. I have my U.S. dollars in there. I can go out and buy a full share of this stock. I don't have to worry about any baked in or hidden fees, not gonna be a problem, especially if you have enough dollars to go out and buy full shares. But um, in general, I think it's really, really, really awesome. I mean, to kind of put it simply, as much as I mentioned there, playing the currency game or using your US dollar account, especially for a beginner, that's not really where your attention should be. I think your attention should be on finding great investments and to be able to kind of look at maybe some of the big ones, the FANG stocks out there that you wanna hold in your portfolio, getting easier access to them, major, major, pro in my opinion. But I think that will wrap it up for my video on CDRs, guys. I hope that was able to answer some of your questions. If you enjoyed this video and you learned something new, please do drop a big thumbs up. That helps the channel more than you would know. I really do wanna hear from you guys down in the comment section below. Are you guys using CDRs? Do you like the idea? Is there something I missed in terms of why they're really bad or why they're really good? Leave that all in the comment section below. Very, very excited to hear the discussion. If you are not already subscribed to this channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications because we post videos like this all focused on the Canadian market each and every week. Myself, my dad, sometimes joint. And last but not least, of course, we do have our investing academy. If you are somebody that wants to further your knowledge, whether that's going from zero to 10 or from 10 to 100, I don't know, going forever from wherever, click that first link down below because we work with people all across the country. As long as you got access to a laptop, a tablet, uh, your smartphone for that matter, you can go through the training, you can learn all about it, you can join our discussion, join our community here. That is that first link down below. But as always, I thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.